Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be driving a very special M3 Touring. No, not our G81 M3 Touring. We're going to be driving the Pit and Paddock X Bilstein E91 M3 GTS. Before we take it for a drive, let's take a look at some of the key features before we actually talk to the person who built it, who is Sean from PSI in Florida. This car was actually built in America for SEMA last year, commissioned by Bill Stein and Pitt and Paddock. So it is a full E91 M3 conversion. So it has all of the running gear from the E92 M3. It has Bill Stein Club Sport suspension, StopTech Trophy brakes, BBS E88 wheels, a GTS style front lip, BMW M performance seats, but the real trick thing about this car is the engine. It is a 4.6 stroker from Carban and it produces 550 horsepower and it's completely naturally aspirated. It sounds absolutely incredible with the even Chewy plenum and the Acro exhaust, but you'll see that in a minute. But the work didn't stop with the outside and the mechanicals of this car. The interior is fully custom and it has the M performance seats at the front and the rears are trimmed to match. But let's go and speak to the person who built this car and find out a bit more in detail. So we've jumped back in time now and the E91 M3 GTS is in our takeover at BMW Park Lane. And I have the person who built the car, Sean from PSI, to explain to us how the car came about and what the build actually is. So Daryl at Pitt and Paddock actually came to me wanting to build a car for a special project they were doing with Bilstein. And we commissioned this car for SEMA. It was built for SEMA last year. And now we're taking it on a European tour with CSF and Bilstein and some of the other partners. So this is the Pitt and Paddock Bilstein E91 M3 GTS tribute build that we built for Daryl at Pitt and Paddock. And now it's here and I'm honored to be here at the takeover event. This is number three, I think, for you guys. Yes, right? it is. Yeah, it's the third one we're doing. And the theme is slightly different and it's things that BMW never built. And hence the reason why this is here, because they obviously made the E92 M3 GTS. They built the E90 M3 CRT, which we have, which is a four door version of that. And now we have the touring that BMW never built. So do you want to take us through some of the spec on the car? Yeah, so the, the idea with the project was to make a GTS tribute, but we wanted it to be OEM plus. So one of the first things I'll point out is the motor, which is a 4.6 liter stroker from Carbon, mm -hmm. with of course the Eventury full intake package on it in gloss. So can you tell us a bit more about the powertrain and drivetrain, kind of how much BHP is the car running, what suspension and brakes does it have? Sure, so this is around 500 horsepower. I believe it's around 440 foot-pounds of torque. So it's a tick up from factory, but it's the 4.6 stroker. It's a set of Bilstein Club Sport suspension, which is a pretty rare suspension in the States, but you're really familiar with Bilstein <laughs> and you work with them a lot, um, which is a great product. It has a carbon drive shaft from Drive Chef Shop. It also has the StopTech Trophy Kit, which is actually the smaller rotor kit so we could fit these crazy 18 uh, BBS E88s on the car. And I've noticed that the car's running a lot of camber at the front, and I'm assuming that's because of the low ET on the wheels. It is, I think it's an ET12 front setup on this, which was, is a crazy spec for the car, uh, but it makes it work super aggressive uh, for this kind of stance that we went for. So I've heard this car in videos, it sounds quite intoxicating with a plenum, but it's also got a special exhaust out of the back. Yeah, it has the Akrapovich uh, period exhaust from uh, the E90, which was made special for the E91. It also has the titanium tips, which are my favorite Akrapovich tips for this. Mine too. Yeah, for this model. And those were in period, that's what I had on my car. And they stopped making them and they actually reissued them, I think, six months ago or so. And we got a set special for this. It also has the fire orange color, which is the GTS famous color. 
the interior that was based on a period correct set of BMW performance seats. And we did the rear, rear interior to match that. Cool, so you must be very proud to have built this essentially from two cars and make them into one and then give as much GTS inspired and then add your own touches or Daryl's touches to the car. Yeah, I mean, when you know, Daryl and I are very alike because he has an E92 M3, he also daily drives a 328 wagon E91. So he wanted kind of the best of both worlds. And I got to do my special touches and some of the stuff that I got to do with this car was we painted, whole car has been totally painted down, uh, brought down all the way to the metal and then re-sprayed. Re but we did, we kept it the satin inside the engine bay, but we did it a little bit less matte than traditional. So it looks the same, but it looks a little bit more refined. Yeah. We also kept the orange peel that the car has originally from the BMW. We just lessened it a bit. Yeah. So most people <laughs> that pay attention to paint will notice orange peel still there, yeah. but it's not as much as the robots no, added in, in Germany. So it looks, it looks like a a factory car that's had a good polish. So it's yes, been improved a exactly, little bit. Exactly, yeah. But I just didn't want a glass paint because yeah. you could, uh, you know, someone like you would notice from far away that's been painted. That's been and painted. we didn't want that. We wanted people to see this just like this, just like this environment in yeah. the dealership and say, oh, oh, I didn't know they made that car. Yeah. So that was cool. Kind of Sean, good. thank you very much for yeah. talking us through the car. I would say that's enough talk. I'm looking forward to getting behind the wheel and see what it drives like. Do all the parts come together to make something that's an OEM Plus version of the GTS or the CRT? In short, yes. This car is equipped with Bilstein Club Sport suspension, which I've had a good drive of in Ryan Stewart's E92 M3 when he owned it. I would say they probably set this up a little bit too stiff for UK roads. If I had time, I would change that. But I know how this suspension can behave on these roads. It's set up to be very controlled on the turn-in, it's very sharp. But I think the piece de resistance of this car, which most of you will probably agree with, is the 4.6 stroker. And as you heard Sean talk about, the idea was not to make a GTS version of this car, but to actually make an OEM Plus version and hence going for the 4.6 rather than the 4.4. And I will say this is by far the fastest S65 variant I've driven. The amount of torque is just incredible. I wasn't actually expecting it to be this fast. Um, so it was a nice surprise not only is it quick it just revs very freely at the top end on the sound so not only is the engine fantastic it's mated to a full even cherry plenum so it sounds absolutely incredible on acceleration on downshift and that's complemented by the full Akrapovich titanium exhaust. And I really like the fact they've brought the Heritage tips back. So when Acra first released this exhaust back in like 2012, they had a non-carbon fiber version. And then when carbon fiber took people's imagination, they kind of stopped making this one. And I actually prefer the design and it does sound great. It's, it's nice tone without being too loud. Could easily use this car on track as well the way it's set up for the road a little bit too stiff but as i said that could easily be adjusted it's just a great package and then the stop dead brakes yeah very progressive more than enough for this car on the road and again we'll be able to handle track work really well and for track, you've also got the whole CSF cooling suite, which would help keep the temperatures down. Yeah, it's just, I can't explain how quick this is. Obviously, I have a CRT, 
and that's noticeably quicker than the normal S65 but this just takes it a notch or two up in terms of the interior it does actually feel like a factory car it does not feel aftermarket um, I'm a big fan of these M performance seats they're very hard to get hold of now because they stopped making them so you'd have to buy them on the second-hand market but they are a very good seat without being too uncomfortable or limiting in and out access we do actually have a pair of these to go into our Japan red E92 M3 so I'm looking forward to putting them in and enhancing the experience in that car but what can I say this has actually exceeded my expectations obviously on paper it looks great but sometimes you know these things don't come together but this is a very well-rounded package hats off to you guys at pit and paddock and the guys at psi for building it Thank you so much for watching guys if you like the video please give us a thumbs up and if you haven't already please remember to subscribe to the channel and turn your notifications on if you want to join the conversation please drop us a comment below and we will do our best to respond to you and if you're running out of things to watch why don't you watch one of these two